You're listening to the Viral Volley Podcast Podcast. Now here's your host, Rob, on the mic. Hey, good day, everyone. I'm Rob Sparrow on the Viral Volley Podcast, and we've got a very special edition of College Volleyball Weekly. It's the Rumi Recap Edition because we've got uh, USC Beach, actually, I should say it, 2021 National Champion USC Collegiate Beach Volleyball Team, and Tina Gradina, Haley Harwood, and Julia Scholes. Uh, they're not so roomy right now because Tina's in Sochi, Russia. And I believe that you two are somewhere in Southern California, like a South Bay beach somewhere. Is that right? We're in LA. Oh, you're in LA. You're still around the campus. Yeah. If yeah. I recognize the painting on the wall, it's Haley's room, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you ladies coming on, especially after such a, um, I mean, a mind blowing season that was so exciting to watch, especially after COVID and, um, just all the things that transpired just within the last 18 months, because uh, we were all kind of following what was happening around the world with volleyball. We were wondering if volleyball is going to even start. And we come to this 2021 season that was amazing, and at least from a fan standpoint. Um, but you know, coming out on top, the USC Trojans, their fourth national championship. Um, so congratulations, ladies. Thanks, Thank you. Bob. Thank you. All right, so first question for all of you. Uh, before coming out of COVID, what were all of you doing previous to the 2021 Collegiate Beach season? And we'll start with you, Tina. Yeah, so the fall semester, basically. Um, that's when I was waiting for Dane to tell us what's going to happen with practices because in the beginning, we were supposed to start practicing already in October, I think. And... Uh, I actually was kind of having a rest and uh, I flew to LA for a month and uh, trained with Haley and Julia when they would bring me to the beach, um, but actually not that much. <laughs> How about you, Haley? Yeah, I mostly played with Julia pretty much all summer, um, all fall. We went to Myrtle Beach, uh, Wapaka, and another tournament, I remember but we played in three tournaments and uh, we were just training with local people and teammates and all that stuff, you know, safely before um, the season started. Well, I know you've kind of answered for Julia, but I'm going to ask Julia, you two had quite the run this summer going undefeated and following your results and all the matches like Wapaka and all the different uh, AVP next that you were playing in, you guys are killing it. And we were kind of hoping for Nuss Cloth versus Harvard Skulls matchup over the during that time that everyone was off. But Julie, what, was, what were your thoughts on playing with Haley? Because I believe if I remember from our podcast from months ago, it was your first time playing together. Oh yeah, it was our first time playing together over the summer, and it was just awesome to meet her. Obviously, we're roommates, and uh, she's so fiery on the court. So um, it was just a really fun experience, and um, good to get that going into season. Um, and also before playing, I also rested like Tina and I got to spend some quality time with my family. And I feel like it just rejuvenated me in the sense of um, college volleyball is important, but it's not everything. And taking time to really uh, just rest and look at life with a new perspective was really helpful. Right. Now, in regards to training, Tina, uh, with the Olympics coming pretty quickly what was it like for you to train for both the collegiate beach season and preparing for the olympics um yeah it was the situation that i wanted to avoid by taking the red shirt year last year but it ended up happening and well whatever life throws at you <laughs> just do it and um yeah it, it, it was just time management like finding the hours in the day to do what i'm supposed to be doing so I ended up sometimes uh, training in the mornings with Anastasia in Hermosa Beach and then going to USC practices. But uh, yeah, now looking back, it's it's uh, I'm happy it all worked out well. And obviously USC like supported me so much uh, in doing this. So I'm really thankful for that. Well, that's a great transition for the next question, uh, both for Haley and Julia, but what was the team's response to Tina's situation and supporting her in both of her endeavors as an Olympian and a student athlete, especially since you guys are all roommates? 
Yeah, I would say that we just feel privileged and lucky to have Tina as a teammate. So I think everyone on the team feels that and we just want what's best for Tina and we just want to be rooting her on whether that's on our court or on the freaking national uh, team for Latvia in the Olympics. And so we just are so thankful for Tina and just what she brings to the squad and wherever she is, we're just rooting her on and yeah. That's so nice of you to say, Julia, but literally the same thing can literally be said about both of you. Like, thank you so much for coming to USC. Like, same. So it's nothing special. <laughs> yes. well, how, about you? how about you, Haley? Do you have anything to add on the, the situation? Yeah, I think there's just, you know, a level of trust that we all trust Tina. We know if she's coming late, she's not just, you know, goofing around. She was at another practice or she was at some other you know lift and then she's coming to our lift and it's like wow like she's really putting in all this work and if she's leaving practice early to go get treatment you know none of us had any problem with that because you know your body goes through so much and um i think there was just that good level of trust there between the whole team so there was no issues with it at all was she a good roommate <laughs> Yeah, we, we all took out trash equally, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. a minimalist. Like, oh, I, yeah, I've been learning from Julia and Haley for sure how to live life up to the fullest in terms of like <laughs> enjoying things. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy we lived this, this year together. Like, truly, it's so nice. Yeah, my mind went. Oh gosh, they showed me how to properly take out trash with this wonderful technique with efficiency and, <laughs> and be sure to get the trash man. So uh, let's jump into the start of the um, 2021 season. Um, Trojans ripped right out of the gate going 13 and 0 in duels. What got the team firing and all of you and your pairs firing as early as you did? And we'll start with you, Julia. Um, I think we were all we all have the same mindset in the sense that we get to play volleyball and we get to be competitive. And we've been waiting all um, year for that. And just to be in the college scene is very different than um, going to different tournaments because you're playing for something bigger than yourself and you're playing for your university. Um, and I think we didn't take that lightly in each game we approached. We were like, we have to earn this game and no one's going to give it to us. So I think every game we held the highest respect for our opponent and really gave it our best shot um, and played to try to play to the best of our ability each game. Yep. Well, let's jump over to Tina just to mix it up here and then we'll, we'll finish up with Haley. Uh, what are your thoughts on the, the 13 and 0 record out of the gate? Yeah, Julia summed it up pretty well. I would say it, it was this year, the overall feeling of being on this team for me was that we were all in the same on the same page. And that just translates on the court really well. Yep. And Haley, anything to add? Both really well said. I think the only thing I would add is prior to the matches, just how competitive our practices are. Uh, you know, we would be just as fired up on our Saturday practices when we're being called out to different courts and we're actually playing matches against each other and uh, trying to make it as, you know, game-like as possible. And they, they would get pretty heated. And, you know, we, um, we value each other as teammates and that's the reason they would get heated uh, in the most like respectful way is that we're pushing each other. We know each other's capabilities uh, and we're trying to just battle with each other to see who can win on that day. And I think that translated to battling against opponents and having each other's backs one through five uh, was just really cool. Well, I saw some uh, social media on your guys' practices and some people getting decapped and sniped uh, just in practices of a pretty brutal practice. And I think Delaney Maple was one of the recipients of a, either decap or a snipe. <laughs> from Julia. Julia is the one to look out from in practices. <laughs> I think it's funny because all of you are pretty heavy hitters. And the fact that you, Tina, would say, watch out for Julia, that she's catching your eye. You got to be a banger, Julia. <laughs> she is. I know Harley, I know Haley is, but, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't until the, I got to see in person, and Julia's like, wow, Julia's got a big arm. <laughs> well, let's, let's jump to our other question here. USC was 12-0, and, and Coach Dane Blanton mixed it up with 
Julia going to the number one pair with Sammy and Haley moving up to the number two pair with Megan. I guess, Tina, you were at the uh, FIVB four star in Cancun, and I, if I'm correct on that. Um, at least when I was looking at the, the box scores. Was that the timeline, guys? Was, I think it was, yeah. Because there was a was... shift in your lineup, and I was surprised to not see you in there. Maybe you were bubbling or, or something for it. But um, Tina, were you concerned with your absence having to miss the uh, collegiate beach competition on, on such a big weekend of play? Yes, definitely. And um, when I had the choice of uh, trying to figure out which Cancun tournament I should go to, I tried to pick the one where I would miss the least amount of games. And uh, obviously, Dane wasn't happy when I told him I want to go. But it's not that I want to or it's or I did want to, but it's just like uh, that's the whole heart hardship of this semester was the combination of trying to do Latvia and USC together and this was one of the sacrifices I had to make make in on the USC side but uh, if I if it was my way I wouldn't have left for sure right and Julian Haley during that same stretch it was the first time you two had not played together um especially with the success that you two were bringing in from that the summer and that, you know, all those different AVP uh, Nexts and uh, AVP Americas. Um, did any of you have any concerns in your new roles with Julia being at the number ones with Sammy and you, Haley, at the number twos with Megan? And we'll start with you, Julia. Um, sorry, the lineup changed like a little bit before Tina left. Okay. Um, so I think we kind of got used to um, playing with new people. And um, obviously it ch changed further once Tina came back because um, we had a few other moving pieces. Um, but I would say that uh, obviously Haley and I love playing together, but we both have the same mindset as we put the team first and wherever the coaches put us, we're gonna play to the best of our ability and make the most of it. And so regardless of we want what we want, we know that the coaches are looking out for the team's best interest. So we trust them and we trust the program. And so wherever we're at, uh, we're just gonna do our best. And I feel like uh, that's what we did and it worked out well. Yeah. Haley, anything to uh, chip in there? Yeah, I mean, I it's it was different obviously, but um, like Julia said, we got practice during the week before the matches. So with Megan, um, she's so good at volleyball. So it's just like, also you can't go wrong with any of the partners I had this season. Like everyone's just so good. Like you really can't go wrong. Just throw us on the court. And uh, it's nice to have some practice beforehand, but um, yeah, I, I felt pretty at ease. I wasn't that stressed about the lineup. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's just crazy how, how literally we could be mixed and matched like crisscross in any way. And it, I tr truly believe that any way it would have worked out like just as well as I it did this way. So it just shows how like amazing our team was this year. Yeah. Well, I was speaking to uh, coach Dane Blanton at the uh, PAC 12 tournament and uh, it's like, Rob, I can mix it up and we're going to have a quality team at no matter what pair we're going to be at. So he had a lot of confidence in the lineup he was putting out there. So um, I want to go ahead and move to the Easter weekend, April 3rd and 4th. And, uh, that was the weekend that uh, the Trojans split with national, national championship contenders, uh, Florida State and LSU. But with those losses, you, after being undefeated at that point, um, you dropped two in that weekend, two of the four uh, duels. But what effect did that weekend have on your team? And uh, we'll start with you, Haley. I think it was good. Um, in the moment, it didn't feel good, obviously, but it was definitely good to show that we have things to work on. You know, we were exposed a little bit in certain areas that maybe you wouldn't have been exposed if you won and you kind of could have overlooked things. Um, and I think it was just good in terms of our team morale and dealing with a loss because I feel like on the road to victory, if you don't deal with uh, like a loss or stumbling block, it can almost get, a little more scary if you haven't dealt with it in the end. So I think it was actually pretty good that we um, kind of removed the target from our back a little bit in that sense, maybe just subconsciously, but 
I definitely think it was a solid weekend for sure. And we split with them. So yep. still, still got some wins over the weekend. <laughs> well, I believe if I recall correctly, both uh, Tina and Julia, you were out of that series during that weekend, but um, just yeah. Julia, just Julia. Okay. I was looking through, I was trying to remember everything off the top of my head, but um, how about for you, Tina? Uh, what was that weekend like knowing that uh, with these two CCSA powerhouses, you dropped two of the four? Yes, it was so exciting. I was looking forward to that weekend for so long because I knew that the games are going to be so close and uh, and uh, really high level. And uh, I think me and Sammy, we went three, like we lost three games and won one, which was kind of like, like disappointing because obviously I wanted to win every single one of them. But uh, it, it was, it just gave me more, uh, more like ambition and more um, reasons to like prove that no, this was like, we can, we can beat everyone all the time. And uh, so I, I totally agree to what Haley said. You put it in such nice words. Like it was, we got exposed in, in places where we wouldn't have, uh, that we wouldn't have known if we had won. So I'm really happy that everything happened exactly the way it happened. Yeah. Now, Julie, you had to sit out during that that weekend series, I believe, uh, uh, watching the sidelines. What, what was going through your mind, knowing that uh, you were a passive supporter, so to speak? I felt like I was a very active supporter. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun that weekend just because I trust my team so much. And uh, I knew that they would take care of business and, and the games like they did. And it was super exciting to watch. And... Um, I think that, yeah, two of the games didn't fall our way, but I think that obviously served our team well. Um, but I felt a little less pressure in the sense that um, I wasn't going to let my team down that weekend. And I know that that's such a uh, weight to bear on a game day um, and just wanting to play for the people around you. And so I just gave me another element of respect for my teammates and what everyone does each day and just the coaching staff and just high level volleyball around was awesome to watch from both sides. So I enjoyed that weekend. Right. Now I'm curious, do you recall what uh, Dane told you guys after that weekend or each of the losses? Uh, was it, I mean, obviously if anyone knows Dane, he's probably one of the most encouraging people to be around, but I know that he used it as some kind of fuel or fire or motivation for you, but I'm curious what he told you. And uh, I, Tina, it looks like you have something to say. So we'll start with you first. <laughs> Uh, what first thing that popped in my mind was that I specifically remember, Julia, how Dane asked your opinion uh, about what happened that weekend. Like he asked you to like say it in front of the whole team of what in your mind could be improved. Um, but uh, yes, Dane was very supportive and he, he was like, this doesn't matter at all. It all comes down at the end to Alabama. So that's the main point that I remember him saying. Wow. Anything to add, uh, Haley or Julie? I think I was surprised at his reaction. I honestly, I didn't, I didn't know what he was going to say. And he was, he was very calm. Uh, and it just kind of put me at ease too, because sometimes, you know, it's like, we're all out here and we're all on the same page and we're all trying our best. And that's what he really values. He's said it over and over is if you're out there and you're giving all of your 100% effort, attitude, and enthusiasm all the time, that's all you can do. And so I think when we do that, you know, that that's really all you can do. And he uh, still supported us through that. So he was very calm and very supportive, like Tina said. Yep. Anything else to add there, Julia? Kind of seconding what they said, but yeah. <laughs> that works. Well, that weekend actually served as another fire to ignite another 12 match winning streak um, with the, uh, the lineup that you ended up finishing up with for the year or the pairs um, Tina with Megan, Julie with Sammy, Haley with Haley. So, uh, and of course they had Delaney and Joy stayed the same and the Norse stayed the same. So, but that's a pretty lethal lineup, even with a change up, but what were your initial reactions to the making that change in the lineups? Because especially with Julia, um, and playing with Haley for so long and Tina, you were Sammy at the beginning of the season. Uh, you, you'd alluded to it being pretty easy since 
you can match anyone. You mentioned matching anyone else up with each other and being so good, but I mean, this is crunch time now towards the end of the tail end of the season. And obviously the national championship was the goal. So let's start with you on this one, Julia. Yeah, I think that having uh, that weekend off and then coming back to practice, I think it was not necessarily like reinventing um, everything we've been doing up to that season, but I think the freshness of having new pairings um, just allowed people to grow in different ways because you learn different things from different people. And when you're paired with someone new, um, it either exposes a side of you you need to work on or it um, shows you a game of a uh, side of your game that you didn't know existed because you never had to draw on that before. So I think that it was a surprise, but I think it also um, just um, allowed us to continue to grow as players and people, which was cool. Yep. That's really good. How about you, Haley? That was so good. Um, <laughs> I, I think, yeah, for me and Haley specifically, the initial switch we we're like all right we just know. for our listeners it's Haley Holgren that yeah. Haley is referring yeah. to she's not speaking in third person yeah just one on two no <laughs> me and Haley we would played together before um she had been defending behind Megan primarily so it was kind of like okay time to get some blocking reps for her and uh I think I started off playing left and we were just kind of deciding you know what sides are we going to play because we we're both playing on the right and it seemed kind of like we didn't find our groove right off the bat um and then finally <laughs> at the very end you know going into Gulf Shores we were getting each other the the right sets that we needed and we were getting the communication and the the balance on the court that we needed um so sometimes it things can click like right off the bat and sometimes they need some growth um but like Julia said it was just it's cool to experience different challenges just on your own side and different things that you and your partner can uh, work through together. Right. And uh, Tina, finally, I mean, obviously you had one of the, uh, what seems like the smoothest of transitions being that you got pair of the week a bunch of times with Megan yeah. but, <laughs> and then she's freshman of the year uh, for uh, PAC 12. And I, I believe ABCA, if I remember correctly, but I, I have to look back at that. I don't want to, let the cat out of the bag because some other awards me coming out that I'm confusing now, but uh, what was the transition for you? Playing with Megan is a joy. <laughs> you, there's nothing, you, there's nothing bad that come like Megan is just amazing, but uh, just in general, like to comment about the whole lineup change. Like, I think this is such a bold move from Dane because our original, our original lineup is what makes sense and what people would expect from hearing our names, the lineup to look like almost. And for him to completely disregard all that pressure that he probably felt from other people and people asking him that this doesn't make sense Julie and Haley have been playing together Tina and Sammy the connection blocker and defender and then for him to like completely throw all that out and like just put two blockers together split a pair up it's honestly amazing at how um like genius and innovative that was and that it worked and that he trusted us to trust him and to trust each other and yeah trust is literally the biggest word here that we cannot emphasize enough because without it this wouldn't have worked but it did and that's why I'm just so proud I'm truly like just so proud about our team like it's it, it gives me goosebumps of how how mentally and emotionally grown up everyone was in our team in dealing with this situation yeah well let's jump to Gulf Shores weekend and I was thinking of a way to describe it as I was watching, you know, with, you know, utter excitement of like seeing all these people battling and seeing some of the best ball. But I can only call it is one of the most amazing displays of dominance by the Trojans because he marched through number six, Cal Poly, number three, Florida State, number five, LMU, and then uh, took out uh, UCLA for the national championship. Looking back at your team's performance, what were um, some of the key moments of this pursuit of the national championship that weekend. And let's start with you on this one, Tina. 
Um, it's hard to say. Maybe Haley and Julie, you have a few moments. I was, because, I was saying yeah. yes because he called you first. So. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, key moments, they're, they're by definition shouldn't be a key moment in general because everything, every game, every point should be the same and uh, same level, everything. And I think that is the whole key that we had was that we could play every match the same. So that would be my answer to this. Wow, dodged the bullet. You may have dodged the bullet for everyone there. I don't know if they want to follow up with that answer. <laughs> any any more thing to say? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, anything to add on that? I don't have a key moment necessarily, but I think um, just like a mindset going into each game, kind of like Tina said, was just so focused on that moment. And I remember from me and Haley's match too, like we weren't looking at the big scoreboard um, to see, you know, what the other pairs, how they were doing, because it really doesn't matter. Uh, all you have to do is focus on your court. And I think that was kind of the mindset from all teams was just, you go out, you do your job, whatever happens, happens. And we're all just in this moment, kind of head down. And that mindset carried through each individual match. You know, it's easy to look at, oh, who, if they win and we win, who do we play later? And Sometimes it's better just to kind of put that aside and just kind of be in the in the here and now. Yep. Julie, do you want to add something or are you, you're just going to stick with it there, going to roll with it there? Roll with it. <laughs> I, I would say an important po moment was when we were waiting to find out who's going to be your opponent in mm -hmm. the finals, because that's the time off when everyone can just be in their own heads and think and like potentially go crazy. But no, everyone stayed calm. So I would say that was important that we just accepted whoever it will be, will be and will go and show up and play. Yeah. Well, next question for you guys. Let's just say between the three of you and the pairs you played in, uh, there are multiple postseason honors ranging from AVCA All-America Awards to Pac-12 Player of the Year to all conference teams and even partnering with the freshman of the year. Um, what are your thoughts on your performances looking back at the 2021 season and the way that it ended? And because Haley's eyebrows went up, I'm going to go and call on her first. <laughs> We're going to talk about our own performances? Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, wow. I think the this season was very eye-opening in so many ways, and I'm just so thankful for the coaching staff and the whole team and just for this experience, first of all. So I just am leaving this season with a very thankful heart <clears throat> uh, for all of it. The ups and the downs. And, um, yeah, I think – being at the twos, being at the threes, um, you know, going, moving, well, I shouldn't say moving down, but, you know, moving down to the threes, you know, sometimes there could be a mindset of, oh, me and Haley were at the ones last season and now we're at the threes and well, like we could, should be winning every match, but that's not a realistic thing to be telling yourself because the level is so strong across the board, you know, any f fives pair at the top schools could be a ones pair somewhere. Like it just, the margin is so thin. So I think really challenging um, some thought process that could come in and really not be helpful. So I think just in terms of my own performance, I think um, can be more consistent in terms of limiting that type of thinking or any negative type of thinking and just going out, having fun, uh, giving it your all hundred percent, getting Sandy. Um, Cause that's what it's all about. So that wasn't a very specific answer. <laughs> it's very philosophical, but we'll, I like it. Let's go over to Tina thoughts on, on your performances, looking back at the season and the way it ended. Yeah, I would say my performance took a 180 degree turn because at the end I ended up playing defense uh, half of the time and uh, it was so exciting I loved it and um, it just opened up a new perspective for me on just opened up a new chamber of love for volleyball for me because uh, I love this game so much so it was amazing to see that there's even more aspects to it that I haven't experienced so uh, for me the season ended on a high 
for sure. And the just the pure amount of joy that I got out of the last few games is is one of the biggest happinesses I've had uh, playing volleyball. So I'm just so happy to have experienced that. All right. And then Julia, your thoughts? Yeah, I really have not thought about this or like really analyzed my thoughts on my um, performance, but I would say that at this level, everyone is so good. So anyone can win on any given day. Um, and I think that uh, my, ex my performance, I'm like, okay, how can I get better? What areas can I improve on over the summer? How can I fine tune my game even more? Um, and I think like my performance just still exposes areas that I can improve. So yes, I felt like I gave it my all and tried my best. And, um, but I also think that there's so much more to grow into. Um, and I think obviously like the individual awards for everyone are, are a cool thing, but I think we're just so proud of the team as a whole because it took everyone from the top of the lineup down to the bottom and, and the people who are in supportive roles. And so I think that we're just so proud of our team and just what we achieved together. Um, and I think that was the really special part. Great. Only two more questions, I promise. They will be fast, uh, but I, I may be putting you on the spot. I may have thought of this one very last minute after I sent you the list of questions, but if you could use one word to describe the 2021 season, what would it be? And I will we'll go with Julia since she's the last one talking. Bold. All right, that's good. Haley? Hmm, I guess I would say powerful works in a week could day. be could be taken in, in different ways how cool in a week and day. tina how about you <laughs> like passion there we go and then uh finally what's next for each of you because i know there's a lot of question marks and I, I don't know if you can even reveal what you're doing but you know i thought i'd just throw it out there so we'll start with you tina because yours is one of the most obvious of them but go ahead and start off <laughs> yes yeah, so uh Yes, so I'm playing. I'm playing FIVP. It's a little event internationally, no big deal. <laughs> I'm playing. Yeah, I'm playing uh, this tournament and then two more tournaments before I head to Tokyo, and then after that, I will see. Gotcha. Ooh. <laughs> How about you, Haley? Um, I believe Julia and I are signed up for New Orleans. Uh, there's a big New Orleans tournament um, that a lot of good teams are going to. So that'll be exciting. Nice and close. Yes, they will be there. <laughs> and um, I think we're going to sign up for the Wapaka tournament, but that hasn't opened yet. But honestly, it's just kind of whatever tournaments there are, I, we want to play. And um, just like Julia said, there's so much to work on. So I'm just excited to keep playing volleyball and come back to USC next year and hopefully do it again. So yeah. how about you, Julia? Um, first of all, I'm going to take a few days to rest because my body's starting to hurt because I feel like after nationals, I just jumped right into training again and uh, my body is starting to cry a little. So, um, but other than that, I definitely want to play as much as possible and train and play in tournaments and um, coming back to USC next year, obviously, but um, yeah, I'm just excited for the summer. Well, it's excellent stuff, ladies, and I, I cannot thank you enough for coming on to the Viral Volley Podcast, College Volleyball Weekly, the Rumi Recap Edition, and uh, Tina, good luck in Sochi and the next few FIVB four stars and the Olympics, and Julia and Haley, hopefully be seeing you on the beach, at least in Southern California playing, but we, you know, you can definitely Instagram live your matches that you're playing in tournaments with together. Cause I'll watch, I was watching Taryn and, and Kristen play through their, their Facebook and Instagram. So would love to watch you guys play. And if that, that head to head confrontation never happens, would love to watch it. So um, ladies, I cannot thank you enough. And it's been truly an honor to just watch what's happened with your team this season and, and see your guys' careers. I know some of you are going to continue on some of you may not, but you know, that's just the nature of, of, collegiate beach volleyball and, and collegiate sports so uh, thank you again and i look forward to chatting with you hopefully in the near future thank you rob thanks rob hey y'all thanks for listening to today's episode of the viral volley podcast podcast be sure to follow rob 
at Rob on the Mic on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or at RobOnTheMic.com. Check you next time.